a YouTube uh, brief video this morning. Um, everybody's going to be talking about how Billy Graham passed away, and I had heard in the past several words about, you know, well, when Billy Graham passes, this will happen or that'll happen. You know, some have said that the rapture will happen. Some have said that the tribulation will start, you know, and specifically, there's a video that has uh, Benny Hinn talking with another guy. There's a video with um, Stephen Bendenoon. I just watched a video of a lady that I am not familiar with, but she had a similar dream. Um, I heard that perhaps Jack Van Impey said a similar thing. And, you know, just because I mentioned Benny Hinn or, um, you know, who's the other one I just said? Uh, yeah, just anyone that has said this, you know, I understand people like to come out of the woodworks and say, oh, Benny Hinn, this and that. You know, I'm not here to talk about that. I'm here to talk about the Billy Graham thing. What is your discernment on this word? What is your experience? Who else has said this? Because what I'm praying for this morning is confirmation from the Lord about this. And, um, you know, because I don't trust Benny Hinn. I don't trust, uh, you know, some others that have, you know, spoken some things. So I want to hear confirmation from the Lord through sources that I trust. Now, last night I had a dream. And when I woke up, I wasn't sure what it meant. You know, I usually I get interpretations of dreams, but I wasn't clear on this one. So in real life, IRL, I just bought a house back over the summer. So in the dream, I was moving out of this house into a much more humble place and the walls had wood almost like barn wood or like you were in an outhouse or something. And I specifically remember uh, in the bathroom, there was a mirror about the size of a piece of paper. I want to say, you know, the eight and a half by 11. Now in the house that I bought over the summer, the very first modification that I made was I put these giant mirrors, seven foot, <laughs> seven foot long, in the bathroom because the bathroom's well lit and, uh, you know, the wife's got to put on her makeup and all that sort of thing. Um, you know, and the old mirrors that were in there were just crap. So I took them out. But in this dream, you know, the, it was like barn wood. It was like, uh, you know, like outhouse wood, you know, really like hundred years ago, somebody would have been totally content to live in a place like this. But, you know, the way that we live now, um, something like that would be considered absolute poverty. But here's, here's what stood out to me. The mirror was about the size of a piece of paper, and it had that antique kind of look. You ever seen a mirror that's like, you know, a couple decades old? It starts to get these kind of rusty splotches in it, and um, it really gets unclear. And then the mirror was dusty as well. So, um, this morning, Gary Bear 049 called me and, uh, you know, we had a friend in common. We were both friends with, uh, Brian OT for Jesus who passed away over, you know, Thanksgiving break. Um, you know, so he called me this morning and we were talking about a variety of things, including the Billy Graham stuff. And we discussed this mirror a little bit. And while we were discussing it, I was like, well, I should look this up in the Bible. And I looked up mirror, forgetting that mirror is not in the New Testament, King James. And I remembered that it was glass. So I looked up glass and I came to 1 Corinthians 13, 12. You know, for now we look through a glass darkly or dimly, but then face to face. So... The Lord knows that Billy Graham was going to pass away. He knows these other words that have been spoken about, you know, rapture and tribulation commencing immediately after Billy Graham's passing. And then the dream that I had was very, I don't know, you know, when I look at the Bible, I usually, I look for the thing that, you know, the Holy Spirit highlights to me the most, and that was the verse that 
highlighted to me out of this experience that, you know, now we see through a glass dimly or darkly, but yet soon we will see face to face. So that's my experience. Um, you know, I would just like your input about the Billy Graham thing. Who has spoken these words? Who has gotten dreams or words like this? And, um, you know, just pray about this certain thing because I'm not going to date set on this. I'm not going to say, well, Billy Graham passed, so that means that, you know, all of a sudden something's going to happen. But let's also recall that Israel turned 70 years old in a short number of months here. And Jesus said in Matthew 24, you know, about the parable of the fig tree. When you see its leaves, when you see it beginning to ripen, that this generation shall not pass till all things be fulfilled. That was not referring to previous Israel when Jesus walked the earth. You know, they were not budding and blooming. They got uprooted. They got kicked out and booted. But now they have up. Now they have blossomed. Now they have thrived in the land. You know, look at Mark Twain's account of Israel in the 1800s. He said it was completely desolate. And yet now it's a major exporter of flowers and vegetables and fruits and all sorts of things. I even planted a tree last year in Israel where trees weren't there prior. So the land is blossoming. The land is thriving. And no matter how many times the Muslims come in to try to take Israel out, Israel whoops that butt, right? Get a whooping. And it's not by their own natural power. The Six-Day War was by no man's natural power. It was by the hand of God. And, you know, there's miraculous testimonies that came out of that battle. So the time that we're in is certainly ripe. All the players of Gog Magog, Ezekiel 38, 39, are in position to make that happen. All the things that the Bible says about the end times are happening right now. And... um Sometimes we get hung up a little bit too much with the prophetic doom and gloom, which I believe has its place, but without the positive message of the gospel, what's the point? You can tell people that, hey, World War III is happening pretty soon, but without the positive good news of the gospel, what's the point? The point is that men need to receive the Lord Jesus Christ into their temple, you know, invite him in because Romans 10, 9 through 11 says, uh, confess with your mouth, the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead and you, uh, shall be saved. Anyone that calls upon the name of the Lord shall not be ashamed. So people need to change their thinking, come out of the world's way of thinking and quit following where the world's going and what they're doing and come into the knowledge of the gospel, that Jesus Christ died and rose again to save sinners, and that he's the high priest, and only his blood can make you righteous enough to enter heaven. No works of your own, no goodness of your own, will meet the standard. So, Jesus Christ is the only path, the only sacrifice, the only mediator between God and man. Mary can't help you. Uh, Muhammad's in a grave, you know. So, Jesus is the only one. Jesus is not dead. He is alive. And he confirms his word with signs and wonders. So, according to the word of God, I command you, be healed, be set free, and I command all demons to leave you, for all infirmity to leave you, and I command healing in your body, pain, go now in Jesus' name. Lord, confirm your word in Jesus' name.